I'm going to sing four Scottish Highland lullabies for you. The reason I've chosen lullabies is because I'm singing them quite a lot at the moment because we've got our seven month old granddaughter staying with us here in lockdown. And I sing to her a lot. If she's in a perky mood and wants a little bit of cheering up in Cooper Hall, she enjoys the acoustic here, I can pop out a bit of opera and she quite likes it. It makes her smile. But if I've given the job to rock her off to sleep, which I absolutely love, then back come these old melodies that I was brought up with. Can't always remember all the words, but always know the choruses and they have the same lilting rhythm to them, the soothing rhythm. I've had to Google to check some of the verse words. They're very, very simple in their structure. And actually, like fairy stories, they can be a bit dark. Maybe it's Celtic lore that makes them that way. But some are about loss, about losing a baby, whether to illness or mortality. Some are about working so hard and having so many babies, there's barely time to soothe the baby. And then there's another that tells a story of a baby that she left under a tree so that she could go and gather berries. And when she comes back, the baby isn't there. But I'll introduce each lullaby before I sing it to you. The first lullaby I'm going to sing is actually called Morag's Lullaby. Um, it's a lullaby of missing a child, I think, or conjuring up the memory of having the child, or being in the child's presence and being aware of what the child means as you're holding the child. So there's a verse, blue her eyes as skies in summer, sweet her smile as springtime blooming. Very, very meaningful to me because it just so happens that Liv has got the brightest blue eyes you can imagine. And we've seen many smiles from her in this wonderful spring that we've been enjoying. She's been an absolute tonic. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to sing O Can You Still Cushions. This is a song actually we sang at school when I was young, so it was very familiar to me at home and at school. And then later on in life, when I was training to be a singer, I discovered Benjamin Britten's arrangement of it. Britten was a great collector of folk songs from all around our country. And the, the, his arrangement to this song is lovely. I'm not going to sing his arrangement. Greg is doing an arrangement for me on the cello. We've kept it quite simple. For me, this song almost comes into a working folk song in the sense of this is a mother that has got so much to do, is multitasking, trying to feed all of her children and soothe the one that is crying and needs to get to sleep, partly so she can get on with her work. And she's struggling to do that. And again, there's a chorus. The Gallic chorus, he or we or what the lady be ye. And I've 
come to the conclusion in a lot of these lullabies that these choruses are as much about soothing the mother so that she can do everything she's got to do in order to soothe her baby because soothing is contagious. Oh, can ye so cushions and can ye so sheets and can ye sing the lullaby when the bairn grieves? Oh, be and bother thee, oh, be and bother oh, be and bother thee, my bonny wee lamb. Eeyo, what a lady wee, black is called the Highland Fairy Lullaby and this is the one where the mother has gone out to gather blueberries, blueberries in the forest and leaves her baby under a tree while she gets on with her work but when she comes back the baby has gone and thinks that the fairies in the wood have taken her baby. So maybe it's some kind of fairy story that's told that's been turned into a song. But there's definitely got that magic quality to it. And the chorus of Hoven, Hoven, Gori Ogo is a Gallic lament for having lost something. And if you think about it, it would be a mother's worst nightmare to put your baby somewhere and pop off for a minute. And when you came back, the baby was no longer there. I found the track of the mountain mist 
Mist, the mountain mist. I found the track of the mountain mist, but never a trace of oh baby. Oh, oh, and oh, and go, 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 I'm going to end this little collection of folk songs with Dream Angus. I particularly like this folk song because it's more positive, it's more upbeat, and there's an element of magic that comes through. So you're sending your baby or your child off to sleep, believing in magic. And we all love to do that. And the character Dream Angus purples over the heather. Purple means to jump and leap over the heather at night while children are asleep to bring them their dreams. Bonnie, baby.